Ah, breakout strategies. Setting a support line, then a resistance line, and waiting for that one moment to happen. When the price suddenly breaks through. And when it breaks through, it really breaks through. But how do you trade this strategy successfully? Is there even a strategy? Are there any secrets? Well, yes, there's a couple. And lucky for you, I'm about to share them in this video. Let's not waste any time. Let's get straight to it. Has this ever happened to you? You set your support line, you set your resistance line, and wait for a breakout to happen. Once you see that the price suddenly breaks through your resistance, you enter a trade extremely excited because you're prepared for a huge jump in price. You get your popcorn, sit down, stare at your monitor, but then suddenly the price reverses and dips. You stare at your screen confused on what just happened and your portfolio just tanked. Well, I'm gonna teach you a secret so this never happens to you again. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is what is a breakout? Well, a breakout is when you have a support and resistance where there are multiple key rejections for both. The actual breakout happens when the price bursts through one of those key levels. And notice what happens. When the price does break through, it starts soaring, making this point right here a great entry point. But the question is, how do we find setups like this, where the market could potentially have a breakout? The answer is breakout patterns. I'm sure you've all seen these before, but there are multiple key breakout patterns you should have in the back of your head when trading. There's the flag, wedge, pennant, triangle, and rectangle. Now the problem I see a lot of people doing is they are looking for the exact price action that is in the pattern image. The price will rarely mimic the exact pattern, if ever. So you're not exactly looking for the exact price action that happens in the image, you're looking for the key support and resistance levels that make that pattern. Now to be honest, it doesn't matter which pattern you get. Hell, you don't even have to memorize the names of the patterns. The key thing you have to take away from this is that all these patterns patterns have something in common. The price consolidates, making two key levels, then eventually breaks out. So here we found price movement that looks as if it has multiple key points of support and resistance. The more key points, the better. We acknowledge this is happening, so we put a support and resistance line making a flag pattern. So far so good. But this is the point where people usually make the mistake. So what happens is people usually wait for a breakout in either direction. So once someone sees the price break through their resistance line, they immediately enter the trade right here. But it turns out it was a false breakout and the price reverses in the opposite direction. This specific trader would have lost a pretty decent amount of money. I'm going to show you how to prevent this from happening so we go in with a greater chance of the price going the direction we want it to. The first thing we need to understand is what's called momentum candles. Momentum candles can have many forms but usually it's one big candle with a large body or three medium sized candles all going in the same direction. These two forms of momentum candles are going to be what we are looking for. Let me show you an example. So in this example we have a set of multiple higher highs, so we set a resistance level right here. Then we have a key support level here because the price reversed multiple times at this level. And now we wait. We see a pretty decent sized candle form, and then it breaks the resistance level. This matches our definition for a momentum candle. The problem is only the tip of it broke out, so we are not counting this as a momentum momentum candle. For us to be able to count this as a momentum candle, the majority of the body would have had to been crossing the resistance level. We would also consider this a momentum candle if another green candle appears outside of the line like this. But unfortunately, it was a red candle instead, so we ignore the signal. Let me show you another example. So here we have our support and resistance level set up. The price moves and a decent sized candle breaks through our resistance. It's not a momentum candle because it does does not have a big body, so we wait for further confirmation. A second candle appears, but it's still a pretty small candle. And as we said before, we will only count it as a momentum candle if it has a huge body or there are three green candles. So we wait again. Then a third green candle pops up, which is an extremely bullish sign. So this is where we enter the trade. Now there are three different scenarios that could happen. The price keeps going up from here, the price goes back down to the resistance level and bounces off, or the price breaks through the resistance level and falls back down and counts this as a false breakout. So what should we do? Should we wait for a pullback to happen or should we enter the trade right now? Well, 
Well, what I like to do is set up a strategy. So the odds are always in my favor, no matter what the outcome is. Rather than wait for a pullback, I'm gonna enter the trade at the close of this momentum candle. Then I will set my stop loss right below the resistance level. This way, if the price does end up going down and doing a pullback and bouncing off the resistance level, it does not reach my stop loss and I still make profit. Or if the price decides to go straight up from here, I'm in the trade. Considering this candle right here is a momentum candle, it's a very low chance that it'll be a false breakout. But in the off chance it were, I still have a stop loss in case the price decided to drop. Now that we have our entry point, we need to figure out an exit strategy. With breakouts, they tend to have large upsides. So if we decided to do just a normal 1.5 ratio, we would be missing out on a ton of profit. To make sure we are taking advantage of the huge profits, we're going to be using what I like to call the two-step take profit system. This is how it works. First, you find your entry signal, then put the stop loss below the resistance line. Then we're gonna set our take profit line at a 1.5 ratio. Once the price hits our take profit mark, we sell half of our shares to guarantee that part of the profit. The other half will stay in the game for more gains. Next, we'll raise our stop loss to our previous take profit mark. Then our next take profit mark will be declared by an indicator. That indicator is the chandelier indicator. To add this indicator, just go to trading view, go to the indicators tab and type in chandelier stop. Then go to the indicator settings and change the ATR multiplier to two. This indicator will give us our exit strategy. It's very simple. We sold half of our shares at the 1.5 profit mark. We let the other half run. We set our new stop loss at our old take profit mark. And we will exit the trade once the chandelier indicator changes colors. So right here, we would have sold the remaining of our position because the chandelier indicator changed colors. Notice all the extra profit we made by only selling half of our shares. If we would have sold all of our shares at the 1.5 profit mark, we would have missed out on a ton of upside. Let's see one more example. We find some key points that are great levels to make a support and resistance. Once we set our trend lines, we wait for a momentum candle to break through our resistance. One candle breaks the line, but it does not have a big enough body to be considered a momentum candle. So we wait for two more green candles. Once we see the third green candle, we enter the trade. We then put our stop loss below the resistance line and set our take profit to a 1.5 ratio. We then wait for the price to hit our take profit, then we sell half of our shares. After we sold half of our shares, we move our stop loss to our old take profit mark. Then we turn on the chandelier indicator. We then wait to sell the other half of our shares until the chandelier indicator turns colors. Once it does, we exit the trade. I just showed you some secrets to make your breakout trading game that much much better. All I ask in return is if you take two seconds out of your day and like this video. If you want to see part two of this video and make this strategy even more profitable, check out this video and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.